this document. I will do this earlier rather than later. Um, which is kind of kind of what I'm going to go through. Um, and I just, as I take a look at it, I noticed I didn't necessarily finish the last of the slides, but that's okay. Um, I, I can add to it later. My my whole thought with this, uh, with public speaking and everything, is we have all these great tools that our students have a video camera, some of them in their pockets with their cell phones. A lot of them have borrowed school Chromebooks or have iPads or their own devices at home. So they have the ability to use video uh, to sort of practice public speaking and get the ideas out in, in a safe environment, whether it's just them and the screen or whether it's them in this type of scenario where they're talking to their classmates or something like that. Um, but they have the ability to, to, or we have the ability, I guess, to assign them and to help them to learn those skills. And they have the ability to do that from home from a safe place. Uh, I think, I, I can't remember if I said three quarters, I said three quarters on here. I read another article that said 80% of people uh, have uh, public speaking fears. And then for those of you who are Seinfeld fans, there's the uh, the Jerry Seinfeld uh, comedy routine where he says, uh, you know, public speaking is a higher um, a higher fear for a lot of people than death. So the idea that people would rather die than speak in public is is kind of probably something that maybe we don't know because we do it every day, uh, but that other people may consider as well. So uh, so let's we'll jump into it here. I'll share my screen. Uh, I know that you guys have access to this so you can use this and so we'll jump into it. Um, what I included in this and and we'll get to it kind of quickly because I think each of these each of these different topics are going to be uh, fairly specific to our classroom and what we have already established. but what I grabbed was uh, some ideas for monologues. So um, these are ones that I found. I found that the more I searched for this, the more I got um, stuff from acting sites with people that were applying for roles. So number four here, Stage Milk is a gentleman uh, who has a acting site um, and he gives tips to, to help actors get roles down here, down at the bottom, Andrew Hurl, uh, tips to get roles. But what he did have on here under resources were some of the monologues for men, women, teenagers, and kids. Uh, these were really short ones. Uh, I was looking at this with my son and and then he bailed out on me. But they are very short ones that would be simple for, I, I say simple, uh, maybe not simple, but would be memorizable by a student or easily put on big cue cards so that the student could, you know, practice not just reading and looking down at their script, but actually looking at the camera and practicing here. Uh, this was the one, Louis and... Uh, I only eat hot dogs was the one that my son was going to do. So he, we kind of had a giggle about that as well there. So, um, but that was really focused on acting. This guy right here, Drama Notebook. And I, and I am, if you have seen these, I, I'm glad and I'm sorry for wasting your time here. But this one seemed pretty cool. There did, there was some cost on here. It is more K to 12, I think, focus than it is uh, like professional focus. Um, there are some scripts inside of here, but then there are also under free stuff, some monologues and down in here, that's the contest. That's not what I was looking for. Um, hmm, I'll have to see. There are some monologues and they're kind of separated. So you can sort of scroll through and take a look at some of these. And uh, again, they're not too long. They're written by other people. The only thing that he asks is if you're making use of this is that you give the writer credit and you just say, hey, um, this was used. They cannot be reproduced, but this was used in this manner uh, right here, citing. The performer must cite the author and drama notebook in his or her recitation. Recitate, no recitation. Recital. Um, yeah. And so I think that that would be easy enough to do at the end of it. Again, if we were posting it or something like that, I think if we were using it in our classroom or keeping it all internal and we knew that this is where they were coming from, I think that would be good enough in there. 
The other one that I had on here that I thought was an interesting was pencils and plums. Uh, this was one I was looking at with uh, with my students at home, my my guys at home in mine. But I thought that there were some really cool ideas for almost story writing and storytelling here. The idea of finish the picture. Uh, it has tons and tons of pictures on here for the kids to do. Uh, I'm going to jump to this one and we'll do tiny kids 31 to 61. And you can click all these and print them off and the kids can start to build their ideas based off of, you know, just this simple story starter. And those of you who are humanitarian, uh, humanities class teachers, I'm sorry because this to me is like, wow, why, uh, like, this is so cool. And I'm sure that you guys are way more aware of this. There's some really neat ones in the uh, doors and windows. I kind of like these ones. And just pictures of doors and windows and how could we write a story of what's going on in that story? And then how could we create that, that drama or that uh, monologue or bitter out that where we tell the story. So ideas there. Uh, and then this one here is from some Disney movies. There was 13 that I found from Disney movies on a PDF. And I thought that that was kind of cool too, because that's something that our kids are probably aware of and they can probably mimic and, or have a the sort of mental vision of what that actor is doing. We sort of have the experience and, and that was kind of what Kim and I were talking about before is, is the idea that we have more experience to deal with, you know, situations like this that we're all in now than some of our students, um, which maybe it makes it easier or more complicated, but, I think a lot of our students have probably seen these Disney movies and have a mental image of, of what's going on. So um, what's the tool I recommend? The tool I recommend is Flipgrid. If you haven't seen Flipgrid, if you haven't used Flipgrid, this is the one that I think is awesome. I am a big fan of it. There is a large, large community using Flipgrid right now. So there is, yeah, <laughs> that's awesome, Deanna, yeah. Um, there's tons of stuff and I don't know if you've seen it, but uh, if you haven't down here, um, Matt Miller, Matt Miller is one of the ed tech bloggers. Well, ed bloggers, I will not call them ed tech, ed bloggers that, uh, that I follow. I've read his book, ditch that textbook. It's pretty good, but he has 30 ways, 30 plus ways to use Flipgrid in your classroom. And they're just like little one, two liners type thing. Eh? So it's definitely something to take a look at. His are broken down by topics. If you do a search for, you know, Flipgrid, grade three, science, Alberta, you probably are going to find a hit or two out there with different things. Uh, this one I thought was pretty too, pretty cool. Uh, K2 Can 2. This is actually from the Flipgrid blog. And it's all based on the idea that our little learners, our little K2 learners uh, can do Flipgrid as well. And it goes through... Um, tips and tricks from teachers who are actually doing it, right? How to do it on a mobile device and stuff like that and best practices and everything. So I think it's definitely worth a look with Flipgrid. If you haven't seen Flipgrid, and and please stop me if, if you have seen Flipgrid and you want me to continue on, uh, if you haven't, just leave a note there. If you have, uh, let me know to move on a little quicker, but um, super simple, flipgrid.com. Microsoft bought them, I think about two years ago and has maintained them as free. They are free to everybody now, no matter what kind of account you have. So I have a, uh, I have a, an account already set up, so it already logs in. You can log in with Google, so you can connect with your Google accounts. It makes it easy for the kids to log in. You can also print off QR codes. So for our little learners, if we go back here, for our little learners where it says enter flip code right here, if, uh, if you've printed them off a QR code, you can just bam, they can hold that, uh, I guess it's here, hold that QR code up to the camera and it will log them in into their account. So they don't, even though they may already be logged into, uh, already be logged into their Chromebook and stuff like that. This is another way where you can get them right into their classroom and going. So it's just a simple, simple method to get them in and going. What you do within Flipgrid is you create your grid. Your grid is essentially your classroom. So this is one I did with some teachers at Calgary Christian, or a teacher in her class. Um, this is the one that I always use for my test. So here's my grid. I just use it for that. Inside of here, you create your topics. So with our topics, they can be whatever you want. 
you can leave a uh, written description, you can leave a video description, you can upload a picture as your description. In this case here, say hello to Flipgrid. It has a, uh, an, a GIF obviously and a written description. And then down below, our kids are going to respond to our request for that, right? So here's what we're asking them to do. Down below, they're gonna jump in and they're gonna start responding with their video recordings. Um, just a quick note, this Flipgrid code will take them right into this topic. And likewise, if you print off QR codes, it will bring them right into this topic as well. So you can, if you wanted, distribute codes for each one or share this topic to bring them in. So inside of here, I have a couple uh, that have been posted, um, but we are going to, uh, yeah. And so I have a couple that are posted. I'll show you those. I'll show you how to create one and how to post in here, how to, uh, how to respond to one and what tools are available to you. But inside of here, when we create these, here's all the information you have. You can control how long it is. I think that this is super important because our kids are gonna go down these rabbit holes and they're gonna start, you know, uh, stairway to heaven, this whole thing, right? So we can say, you know what? You have three minutes and that's all. We can turn on moderation which means these don't go live to the remainder of the class until we have an opportunity to, to see them and, uh, and check in on them. So that might be something that you wanna do. Um, there's some other stuff that we can do with regards to this, but let's just update it. We can freeze it, we can make them inactive. We can share it and we can share it directly to our Google Classroom. So we take this code, and we share it to our classroom. It's gonna ask for access if we haven't provided access before. It'll say what class do we wanna put it in. Uh, we're gonna put it in maybe as an assignment or a question. Uh, let's make it, well, let's make it a question so we can see everybody that asks. Because now we're throwing it into classroom, we have the ability to differentiate. So if we only want it to go to certain students, we can differentiate there. We can add some more information. We can go through all of that and we can post it in the classroom. I'm gonna go in a different way here and I'm gonna copy the code. We'll open a new one. And it's gonna take me into it to post my response. So this is taking me in to post my response. I can see other people's responses. And if you see this one here, this is one that I did. And then my son actually responded to mine. So you can see up here, they will get a response and kids can start to see the responses from each other and we can record a new one. So if we hit this, it's gonna start recording. Something is wrong with the camera. I think it doesn't, it looks odd. You can turn off these different options. So the ability to write text, put stickers, do a drawing, have a whiteboard and import photo stickers. You can turn those on and off to make them available to the kids. But then it's a matter of click and go and it's going to record for us. So if we had our monologue prepared or we wanted to practice it or something like that, we could record now giving out our monologue, letting the kids practice in front of a camera and stuff like that, get feedback from their peers and look at their own recording in a simple manner that then can be shared directly with you or if you choose as well, directly with the class. And then once we have that all done, we can watch it if you want. We can add more, we can keep going on, we can pick what we wanna do, we can add you always have to add a little selfie there just to make sure that everybody knows who's putting it in there. You can, again, add those tools inside of here. And then boom, it pops it up and we submit that video. So we get our kids speaking publicly in a situation where they're not actually in public and just practicing that speech. And that's the whole idea behind that portion of it. This is kind of, I mean, it was sort of a tricky way to get this tool in here, but this is really what I was looking at was, how do we get the kids doing those things? I know when I was growing up, there was 4-H uh, speeches and you would give speeches uh, and public speaking competitions and stuff like that. And, and potentially there still are, uh, I, I'm, not, I'm not entirely sure, but uh, I, I did participate in a couple and, and it, was, it was scary, right? And, and, but it was super useful, so. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, Rosina, had you had you seen that before or had you not or? 
No, this is the first time. So thank you, Jason, actually. Oh. Uh, I'm excited to use this now. Thank you. Awesome. So good. I, I'm happy, right? I know Deanna uses it. Deanna, Deanna uses a lot of stuff. So uh, Vicky, I see your mic's open there. Did you, had you seen this before? Or? I have been hearing more and more about Flipgrid with every passing week during this distant learning. So I appreciate your giving a, a demo as to how we could use it in terms of video. So I'd like to pursue that at a later time. But thank you so far for just giving what you've mentioned about this. Yeah, it's, you know what, it's a simple one. And now that you know the tool, the, the difficult thing I would argue is how do you integrate that tool partway through the year when you maybe are not 100% comfortable with it or something like that. So now that you know the tool and you can start to explore it, you start to see the applications of not just monologuing and not just you know recording video responses. Although those are wonderful, right? You can almost have a debate going on uh, with one of these tools. But what about this project in you know science where I used to have the kids do this? Could they present in this manner using Flipgrid? And so an easy way uh, to do that. Um, the next one that I kind of thought about as well with regards to this, and I think it goes together. Uh, I know it's not necessarily storytelling and it's not necessarily, uh, um, well, I guess it is public speaking, but it's doing interviews and podcasts. So my tips with regards to this, uh, I have a time limit. Make sure you have that. Um, stick to a single topic, right? We get our kids that just want to go, okay, I'm going to do an interview. And then they don't have the, they didn't do the inter or the research. They don't know what their topic is. Uh, and they just kind of start flying. And then it, there's a lot of dead air and dead space. You can take a long interview and break it up into smaller episodes. Uh, guest speakers, we can bring in guest speakers. You can organize guest speakers and whatnot. And then uh, we can flip it up. So if we were doing an interview, we could turn it up on the students. And again, I'm thinking about how do we teach our kids skills beyond just podcasting or beyond just presenting their information in a new way. So the skill is potentially responding to questions on a fly. Right. So flip the table on them, have them prep for the interview and then turn the table on them and say, now you're going to do the interview with them or you change, you know, roles partway through. Obviously, I would not suggest doing that on the first one because your kids are probably going to revolt. But down the road, when they get used to doing some of these, now flip the table on them and see how much research they've actually done on a topic. So very, very simple, super easy to use. I would actually use the, uh, the tool that we're on right now, which is uh, Google Meet. Um, you could do a meet, have the videos off, record the audio once. Uh, so our students obviously can't record the audio or instigate, sorry, they can't initiate a meet. You have to initiate the meet. So in this case, you would need to initiate the meet, bring the students in, and then you could step away. That meet is still going to run. They can record it. That recording is going to get sent because you are the initiator is going to get sent to your meet recordings. So you are going to see the meets that come in. You can then review them for any shenanigans that may be going on uh, or just to help the kids out with what's going on. Share that back with the kids. You can either make them owner or just share that and then let them make use of it. Um, I, would, I would even go as far to saying once you share that back, the kids can then grab onto that, import it into WeVideo right, and start to chop it up. They can eliminate all the ums and ahs and stuff like that. Uh, oh, I didn't go on to that. I should meant to go on to the next one. They can they can remove all the ums and ahs and any of the pauses and breaks they have in there to make it a decent thing. I don't think that this needs to be published. I think that we can publish it. We can make it public if we wanted, but the kids don't necessarily need to do that. And I know that that's part of what we're worried about. But even, in a, even making it available in a Google Drive for download is going to allow you to share that with a bigger audience. You can share that with the authentic audience of, you know, potentially depending on it, the entire school, uh, the larger community. You could post it publicly and get people to request access to it, or you could share it with families, right? Uh, just doing just the sharing permissions. We video again, we've looked at that, super simple to do. You can create, if you haven't listened to any podcasts, I, I could suggest a couple of them that, that I've been listening to. I don't listen to a lot of uh, educational ones, I listen to a lot of other ones, but have a cool intro, the kids are gonna do a little bit of design on that. Have a cool outro, a little music stuff in there. Use some, you know, not top 40 music, but use some royalty free music so that they are the star of the show, not 
you know, Taylor Swift or something like that uh, to make it go. But I, I think that that's a simple one to do. I will say um, my, my son and his buddies, we, uh, so, sorry, let me, I'll rewind this. This is my story. I don't tell a lot of stories, but uh, we borrowed, Picture Beat High School did a, uh, a little drive-in movie the other weekend for their gra for a graduation type thing. We borrowed an FM transmitter. I borrowed it from another school division for them. So it's sitting in my garage uh, the other weekend and my kids were like, hey, what's that? And I, so I told them what it is. And they're like, oh, so we could have like a radio show? And they said, yeah. And my oldest son was like, I want to do that. We're going to do a radio show tonight. And I said, brilliant, let's do it. I said, who's going to listen? He's like, what do you mean? And I'm like, well, nobody knows what channel it's on. Nobody knows what we're doing. Who's going to listen? And uh, so, he's, so he calls up his buddies and he's like, oh, my buddy is. His buddy lives almost out in Tabor. And I'm like, it's not going to reach out to Tabor. This is not a like major, you know, thing. It's it's within about, it, it was good. It was about a kilometer and a half, two kilometers was the range of this thing. But um, I'm like, we can't, that's not going to happen. So they actually did one of these uh, Google Meet podcasts and they just recorded that. And uh, and then he uploaded it. He is Soundtrap actually to upload it and edit out some of the clips and stuff. And then I think he was using uh, Last FM. He was going to look at Last FM to post it up publicly. Um, but it was it was super simple. And and I watched it. I thought, oh, this is going to be trash. So he he uploaded it to YouTube right away. The live file. And it was interesting how these were grade nine students. How smart they sounded and i know these kids so i know that they're a bunch of knuckleheads right but how smart they sounded because they realized this was going to go up there and and it was going to listen and and they had their own voice and they set it up all themselves so so it was a super interesting one i thought uh to look into so a very easy one um i need to remember this is a new york times article and i had that on here and that's the page that i didn't finish i was going to put in some other interesting stuff on teaching students how to produce their own podcasts. Um, there is obviously, you know, updated April 14th, right in the middle of COVID-19 and how this has come back into popularity because it can be done from afar. We can bring in our experts into us digitally, virtually, and uh, we don't have to worry about that. But they also have a, uh, looks like it's over now, a podcast contest would only be down in the States most likely anyway. So but they have some interesting stuff around podcasts and storytelling and the old fashioned kind of, I always think of like the old uh, radio stories with the sound effects and stuff like that, how you could have so much fun retelling a part of a story or, uh, you know, a bit like that in, in this format. So um, I am, I am really short today. I am seven minutes short, but I am also out of kind of content. My ideas, and I know, just from what I know of you people in here, I think that you guys could probably add way more ideas uh, than me. So I'll be quiet. If you, if anybody has anything to share, please do so. And if you want to step away, there's nothing else coming. I'm okay with that. Deanna, is, it, is that, I want to share something. No. Okay. That's okay. So, uh, other than that, I, I mean, I'm good. You guys have this as a resource. I'll post this up on, uh, up on with the other ones and stuff like that. So, uh, thanks. Thanks for joining me. Uh, I think next week, maybe the last week for these webinars, I, uh, I'm seeing everything sort of tail off with regards to the people who are interested. And then we'll, we maybe we'll pump back into some a little bit later in June on getting ready for the next year. But, uh, thank you guys for participating this year. I will. Oh, sorry. One other thing I want to just say quick, Rosina, you reminded me of this. Um, I'll share my screen over here. If you want to, I'm getting lots of people asking about this, but Google Meet Grid View has uh, has failed uh, again. It, it's the the extensions and stuff like that. It just happens um, based on that. The one that was originally created was by a school, and I want to say it was in New York, New Jersey or New York. It was based off this guy, Chris Gamble. It was based off of his script that he created to do this. He has since come out and produced his own version of Google Meet Grid View. He is a uh, he is a developer, and that's his that's his uh, kind of role and stuff that he does. I think that you will find if you're getting questions, this one will be much more stable. So I strongly suggest removing the other one and uh, and jumping into this one that, um, especially if you're having issues, so.
So that is it. That is all. I'm going to stop recording and uh, I'll stick around though. So thank you, Jason.